Grace says, could you please explain why someone with autonomic problems, particularly orthostatic intolerance, feels terrible with cardiovascular exercise, but can feel better with strength exercise? This can happen for different reasons, and I'll try to do my best here. Um, so cardiovascular exercise is actually usually the one that smokes most people with orthostatic intolerance. Um, strength training, if the, if the baroreceptor systems are active, <laughs> that bearing down of strength training can actually cause the, the retention of blood or pushing blood into the brain. So some people will actually feel better doing like a Valsalva or bearing down because they push blood into their head and they're like, oh, that feels better. Whereas other people will do the opposite. And you've seen these like videos of people deadlifting and squeezing really hard and then they pass out, right? So some people that don't have that same quality of baroreceptor control may notice that when they do something like bearing down, they feel really bad and gross too. With cardiovascular exercise, feeling bad, we want to first... Like, are you upright while doing them? Or is it also happening when you lay down? What does the vasoreactivity look like? So the response to CO2, how's that doing? That can cause some of the problems as well. That's really helpful. And then the second one is, is if you're just already gassed and having a hard time getting blood to your brain, your heart's beating real hard, and then you just like further do that, then most people don't really do well there. It just over... Uh, overstimulate. And we've used that in the past where we can use that Valsalva and then do activities as a way to push blood into the head for certain people. General question of is chest tightness common? It is common, but it's not always common for the same reason. Um, some people will feel angina, which is like where they feel like they've got pain in their heart. And sometimes that can be from ischemia in the heart, which is something that you definitely want to like be aware of. If it sounds like you've been to the cardiologist. Hopefully they've done just a brilliant workup on you and found nothing wrong with it, which is really great. Then we want to consider, um, you know, different etiologies that would be related also to pain in the chest, whether that's isolating down to muscular pain, whether that's down to sclerotogenous or dermatomal pain, uh, then that can lead you to understanding where to look from there. So you kind of like start to bundle it down. So pain has to come from, so it has to be some sort of a signal. So you have to figure out like what type of signal is generating it, what type of tissue is generating that signal. If you know the type of tissue that's generating it, then you can track it down to where that tissue might be. And then you can start to problem solve with why is it giving you that problem in the first place. Um, but it's common sensation that people will have. It's super uncomfortable and it can make people anxious. Um, so I'm sensitive to that. I know that sucks. Uh, I know it sucks to just feel hard to get a deep breath, but the way you solve for it is by figuring out what is the generator of the pain first, what type of pain, what quality of pain, where's it coming from? And then from there, then you can figure out like, okay, if it's coming from this type of tissue, where is it located? You start searching down the levels. And then once you can isolate that, then you can figure out why it's happening and then try to try to intervene in that, okay? I know that all feels very general and abstract, but like to give you an example, if someone's got like a chest pain, but it radiates around, we might find it's neurogenic. And if it's neurogenic and it's coming from back here, we might find actually like it could be relative to um, something that's going on in the spine. It could be relative to like someone coughing and hurting a rib or irritating the nerve, or maybe they've got inflammation from um, uh, like shingles, like a herpes zoster type event, or maybe it's just from ischemia within the chest because we're getting... Um, we're getting hypoxia the same way we do in the brain and then it starts to hurt in the chest or maybe we've got, you know, costochondritis where the actual intercostal cartilage is irritated and then that gives you the chest pain. So it's like, you're just trying to hunt down and search where that is. You rock says in bed on the left side, feeling fine, but time to roll over, turn on to back, then immediately get tingling all over, especially thighs and hot all over, have to uncover completely. Common pot symptom, double question mark. Okay, uh, common, maybe not necessarily common um, in the world, but do is it a thing that we hear about? Absolutely. Like, so one of the things that people kind of sleep on is posture changes matter when you're upright because we can see what the hemodynamic system does, but also posture positions laying down, just looking at how we're oriented are also a big deal because we can see if there are changes with the 
compression or signal rate coming through. So what we talked about earlier, am I compressing the cord? Am I compressing arteries? Am I compressing veins or nerves that are in the neck or in the, in the back or spine? Um, and a lot of times, as we activate that arousal system, we get super hot. Uh, tinglys are usually, uh, not usually, tinglys can be a sign for some people of spinal cord activities, or they can be like stuff falling asleep. Either way, we tend to be looking at stenosis or things that are being compressed. Might be worth taking a look at.